What is up, everyone? It's nice and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about logic gates, the AND switch, the OR switch, and the XOR switch. I think if anything confuses new players to Rust electricity, it's these. Um, so let's start with a switch comparison here. I've got these laid out from left to right, the AND, OR, and XOR. Uh, and I've done that for a reason to help illustrate how they work. So let's start with the AND switch. It's in the name. If you put one input, it does not pass power. If you put both inputs, or A and B, then you pass power. When it does pass power, it will pass the greater of the two it receives. So in this case, the 50, of course, it's using one on the way out. So uh, the AND switch requires both, and it's in the name, AND switch. Now let's jump over to the XOR switch because uh, the XOR switch is sort of the anti-AND switch, you can think of it that way. If it receives one power, it will pass voltage. So it requires just one, X, O, R, not or both, just one. If it receives two, it will not pass power. So whereas the AND switch will pass the greater of two it receives, that doesn't apply to the XOR switch because it can only ever pass one input at a time. So if you apply something to the other input, you are effectively turning it off. So it's the opposite of the AND switch. Now the OR switch is uh, much simpler. The OR switch, if it receives one input, it'll pass it. If it receives two inputs, it'll pass the greater of the two, like the AND switch. So the OR switch is sort of the hybrid of the two. Requires both, requires one, it'll do one or both. Um, and so, and if it does both, it'll act like the AND switch. That is the basics of these switches. Uh, and so, you know, using them, of course, is different. You know, it's different in practice, but, but the idea here is that if you understand the basic uh, functionality of each of these, you can make some some pretty cool stuff or even some basic stuff. I'm going to show you show you three existing circuits. Uh, uh, these are not my design. These are out there um, and to sort of illustrate how these work. So let's start with the AND switch. Uh, I'm going to do the classic uh, uh, turret door example of, a, you know, a radar gets close and it opens the door. And so the most common way to do this, uh, you know, it, it, with one door, technically you could just run you know you could just run this straight to it and that's straight to that um but that would defeat the purpose of showing the AND switch so normally there's multiple doors and multiple things hooked up so uh if you need more than than just two volts because remember that the hbhf sensor will only ever pass one volt you could send 100 volts here 100 in it's going to pass one out um so that and that works in our favor because the AND switch only requires it requires two powered inputs. It doesn't mean that one of them cannot be one volt and that one volt will effectively power it and turn it on. So whatever you send to the other side will fully pass. If I power this with one volt here and I send 10 here, you'll get 10 out here because this one's powering it. So um, so in this example, I'm just gonna run, you know, very simple. I'm gonna run two volts to the uh, HVHF sensor. Remember that it requires the max of voltage you should ever send to a HVHF sensor is just two. Uh, because it can only pass one. So what's the point? So I'm gonna run that over to the input B, it doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, and then I'm gonna run the other one, the branch out of this one here, which is also set to two, um, cause that's the minimum you can you know do here. I'm gonna run that over to the, the uh, other input there. And then I'm gonna run the output of the uh, and switch over to this door controller. And so it's going to pass the full two because this is going to receive one from here. We don't need to, we only need one, but you know, often there's two doors associated with this. So that's actually in your, in your benefit if that's what you have going on. So if I set this to right now, we have power to one side. So nothing's happening. If I set this to exclude uh, authorized players, now it's going to detect me and it's going to complete the circuits. Now we have a powered one coming here and we have two passing through here. So you have two coming out of here, which is, you know, one more than we need. Um, but that's the idea is that so if you know, if uh, if someone's detected, it completes the circuits and allows you to move this on. Uh, okay, so that's the AND switch. Uh, you can do this with a variety of circuits. This is just sort of an easy way to illustrate this. Um, all right, so the OR switch. Now, the OR switch, I'm gonna do the absolute classic, uh, you know, um, two timers set to one second. Uh, on either side of your base, you use the switches for your lights. This is how you can turn on and off your lights from two different sides of your base without having to run to a single spot. Uh, so uh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna just sort of quickly hook this up. If you want to know more about this, we can sort of talk about this later. Uh, but I'm gonna run power to my lights, and I'm gonna run that through a um, through a, a memory cell. It doesn't actually matter which side you hook up to uh, because the memory cell 
is going to toggle between them so it's irrelevant um, and then i'm going to run the branch out of this one i've already set these branches and i'll i'll show you what those are set to here in a second i'm going to set run this branch to over to here and then i'm going to just uh hook each one of these up to each of these timers coming out of here like so and then i'm going to run i guess we could do blue i'm going to run this out of here and we're going to run that over to our our uh, one of our inputs again does not matter which one you choose uh, just whatever one is available to you so um, and then you're going to connect the uh, output of this to the toggle on your memory cell and so what's going to happen here is you know i have this set to six because I have two, four, six volts of life uh, lights. The memory cell is free, it doesn't take volts, so you don't have to account for that, so you don't need seven. And then I'm gonna set this one here to seven also. Um, and so that's gonna power, you know, one, two, three, but you need two banks of three, because depending on which side it goes through, you need three for each bank to make it through. Um, so uh, now remember that you need one, two, and then three. Um, so this circuit here requires seven. So the actual like two switches will always be seven in this build. And then whatever your lights are, gets scaled from here. So if you have 30 versus 30 volts of lights, you put them in here if you have 15 lights, say. Um, so the way this works is now, if you run each timer, each timer is set to one second. So they work like buttons. If you run the timer, this is making use of the OR switch. And technically in this particular thing, you could also use an XOR switch because neither of these will be run at the same time. Um, and so it doesn't actually matter, but uh, the classic build's using an OR switch, so I'm just trying to illustrate the fact that the OR will pass one and does not require two like the AND switch. And so no matter what side of the base you're on, you can run these switches or these timers, and it's gonna turn on, off, tur turn on and off your lights. And so the reason it's doing that is because it's passing voltage here and it's just toggling this memory cell from side to side. So it doesn't matter which switch does it because each will pass through. So in some ways you can think of the OR switch as kind of a combiner. You know, the root combiner combines root sources, but you can't you can't use it to combine non-root sources. Um, the, the OR switch can be thought of in some ways as a combiner for voltages from non non root power sources um of course there's limits to that if you send 50 to one and 25 to the other it's going to pass the 50 so if that matters uh but anyway that's that's the idea here you get two light switches on either side of the base and uh the or switch makes that possible okay so the final example we're going to do is yet another light switch example on each side of the base only using the xor switch to illustrate that there are builds where in this case, you have to use an XOR switch. You could not use an OR switch for this, and I'll show you why. Um, this is a little bit simpler. It's, I think it's two components less. I'm just gonna run this branch out to this branch over here. And I'm using this branch as a splitter just because these splitters are just huge. Um, and I'm going to run each of those outputs out to here like so. And the and then the, the outputs of each switch simply run to the input one input on your XOR switch like so and and then the output of the XOR switch is going to run to your lights like this and so there you go now you're hooked up to your lights and so the way this works um, and it's kind of cool actually it kind of really il illustrates a logic gate uh, if right now you have the, these are both on it turns out so I've got I set this what I've got this set to 15 because I need seven to come out of each side of these. I need seven out of here and seven on here because depending on which one's passing voltage through to the lights, they both have to have the capability to do that. Um, and so, so in the way this works is right now, the XOR switch, because both of these switches are on, is receiving power from both ends. And if you'll recall from the beginning, you cannot have both of these powered. It, it, it requires only one be powered to pass voltage. So if I turn one of these off, now the lights are gonna turn on because the XOR switch is only receiving power from one and not the other. And so uh, if I turn this off over here, now they turn off because neither of them are powered. Um, but it doesn't matter where you are, you can always turn on and off from either side, no matter what, because at any given time, this is either gonna have nothing coming so they're off or one coming so they're on or if one happens to be on like this one and i'm over here and i'm leaving this one's off but i turn it on it's going to turn off the lights so you know in this way if you do this 
you have to ignore that this is turned on and these are off. So if you ignore the state of the switch, I mean, this works fine. So something, I mean, you know, it doesn't actually technically matter. Um, and so, but if you were to replace this with an OR switch, it's not gonna work because at, you could, if you turn on one and the OR switch is there and you turn on another, the OR switch will remain on because it doesn't care whether it has one or two inputs. Um, so this is a, another version of the same idea. It's just illustrating that um, the logic gate, you know, parameters of the XOR switch require that only one be, be active, which is why this works. So no matter what you do, you'll end up with some variation of the switches, but they'll always either turn on or off the lights. Okay. Hey, I hope that was helpful. You guys, uh, if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments, uh, or you can get me on my discord. Uh, that's all I got. See you later.